You can achieve a little bit more gain by using a vertical and a reflector behind it. Okay, so very simply, if we've got a vertical here, right, and a quarter wave over here, we put one that's about 5% longer. Okay, we'll end up with our more energy, not all of it, <laughs> uh, certainly three, four, five dB going that way, and we'll get what they call front to back. In other words, we'll hear less from behind the mirror. Just in case you don't know how a vertical works, let me just quickly cover two things. How it's connected, all right, and what angle you can expect to get your energy going to and from it. So your the center of the coax, if we've got a coax here, this is a coax fed antenna, all right, and the braid's there. The center will go up uh, your vertical and the braid will be connected to some, what they call radials. I've done a number of videos on radials, but if you, if you have 16 quarter wave radials or 32 eighth wave radials, you'll be almost at the top of the curve. This point is going much further. But anyway, radials is for another day. So that's fine. So that is connected. That, that becomes a circuit. All right, I'll draw it. I'll put all these going up there. That becomes part of the antenna now because it's the shield is here and these are connected. So how does the reflector work? Because it can't just be a piece of wire. Well, it can be actually. <laughs> But what we do is we short out, so we literally connect the radials to the base here, all right? Now, what I've done in the past is I've made two verticals, and I've been able to put the meter on that one, and I can put the meter on that one and make sure this is longer. In other words, if that's resonant about 7.2, I'm looking for that to be resonant about 6.95. Then I short it out. Now... Rowley did a really interesting experiment where he walked a vertical around his garden with the coax connected to a little radio and he physically was trying to null out Indonesia behind him and he came up on the 40 meter band of a spacing and Rowley will probably watch this video and if he does I'll pin his comment to the top but he worked a roughly about 8.75 meter distance. He was getting a bit, the best, sorry, front to back. Because what he was after, he was trying to null out the Indonesians because he's in New Zealand. All right, whatever. And then he's got America going this way. Easy peasy. Now we can, we can draw that. And by the way, I once did a video, um, what <laughs> somebody chipped up and they said prove it so well i built these and, and they do work and, it, and don't take my word for it i actually got in a taxi jumped on an airplane went all the way to auckland around the other side of the world and knocked on roley's door and asked him oh hi Colin. yeah roley listen mate i'm doing a video about like phased verticals either parasitically coupled or the phasing harness. I just want to make sure and want the reassurance to people back home. They do actually work. Yeah, of course they work. Brilliant. Thanks. This is a program called MMANA and it's great fun. You can do things like I want a piece of wire sticking out of the ground. 10 meters long. There it is. 10.2. And I can feed it with my coax wire one because it's the first wire we've drawn at the base or the bottom and we end up with a little red dot here and then we can tell the target frequency is let's say 7.2 give or take all right and then we can calculate this and it will show a far field plot because what we wanted to know where is it difficult to get gain and where it's difficult to get day gain is really down low three between three and eight degrees it's really tough right a lot of manufacturers will say, oh yeah, we've got a gain of this vertical at 1.3 dBi. Bananas, onions, it doesn't matter, right? But yeah, that's your maximum gain. Where is your gain at five degrees? So this might sound really crazy, but it's about minus five. So if I come down here, so it says 100 and, minus 175 degrees, all the way around. It's saying minus 5.4. I will say somewhere between, between minus five and minus five and a half. 
that's where our gain is for our dx as a baseline okay because if it's minus 5.4 there we know every degree we come up it's going to get better so at 10 degrees minus 1.3 it doesn't matter. The, the fact it says minus is irrelevant, okay? We're baselining one antenna to another antenna. So let's do uh, Rowley's calculation, 8.75, and let's put another antenna up. This time it's going to be 10 point, roughly, 10.5. But on the x-axis, we'll move it um, 8.75, roughly, whatever. I'm, I'm, I'm sure doesn't matter too much so if we look at this now we can see we've got two antennas and one sitting behind it not quite sure if it's the left or the right guess we'll find out this will change our SWR it'll probably frequency will probably go down a little bit but let's not worry about that and we could have a quick look at the SWR just to see whoops where it's resonant uh, whatever it's not far away and I can live with an SWR of 1.78 anyway at 7.2 megahertz. So let's go to the far field plot and you can see how some of the energy has now gone over to the left. So if I bring my cursor down to five degrees above the horizon, which is, whoops, press the wrong button. It says minus 1.5 and we had minus 5.5 ish. Four, three, two, one. So it's given us four dB that way on the left and then we're going to hear less over here now look um i think it, the peak gain was about zero where we've got three or four db of extra front to back and at five degrees we're min minus 11 now but you can see i mean that's a worthwhile little experiment to say oh there's some you know island you know coming on a couple of thousand miles away on 20 meters i'll give myself uh, you know, I'll double my power and nearly double it again because that's what this would do. So have I missed anything? I don't think so. But that is telling me to take my medication because <laughs> otherwise I'll go cuckoo. Right, on the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to take two verticals, but what we'll do is we'll use a phasing harness and we'll switch between the two and we'll find out is it any better using a phasing harness or is that a waste of time? Ah, who knows? We'll do that experiment another day. Next video's here, and I've got a playlist underneath it, just for fun. All right, have a great day. I'll see you soon. Bye for now.